Dr. Ben Voth, director of SMU Debate. Welcome to Ion Politics. Great to be here, Jack. So here we go, we have the vice presidential debate. What sticks out most about this debate? Well, I think both of these debaters are actually fairly different from their lead presidential candidates. I think there's a lot more potential here for incisive clash on the issues. And the other thing is just that the situation is such that the election race overall is so close and just keeps getting closer. I think that it makes this debate exceptionally important. Why? I mean, what, you know, let's talk about the fact that the race is so tight. I mean, normally a vice presidential debate not as important as a presidential debate. So why do you think it'll make a difference? Well, I think, again, because it is so close, any little nudge can make a difference. And both of these candidates uh, have come in kind of, I think, late to this process where we're still kind of getting to know who they are. And so I think there really is potential for them to nudge the race, you know, one or two degrees. And, and that is... So, because we are in such a close race, that was all it would take for you know, either Harris or Trump to kind of gain a lot out of it. Both men have done some debating in recent past. And, and I think sometimes people forget that, for example, in 2008, the Palin-Biden debate ended up being one of the most watched debates in presidential history, even though it was a vice presidential debate. And most of the time, we expect them to be smaller audiences, things like that. But th this might be a similar large event. So do you expect this to be attack, attack, attack? I think there will be a lot of attack. I think there's been a lot of fodder that's already created by Harris Trump. I mean, we just had the debate between them really just like a couple of weeks ago. It created a lot of fodder. I mean, there's some things out of you know Springfield, Ohio, which Vance is from, where there was a lot of controversy in that debate where probably there's gonna be charges back and forth about some of that content. And the fact that, again, Vance is from Ohio and some of the, the Springfield controversy where, yeah, there, there are roughly 20,000 Haitian immigrants that have come into that community. That's a pretty hot commodity in the overall election debate. There are lots of arguments about whether it's false, about the cats and dogs and things like that. So there's a lot of strange things that are in the air for the two vice presidential candidates to swat out pretty vigorously. I mean, there were reports of you know, the, the fact that there were attacks on animals, but nothing has ever been proven about this at all. And yet this issue still has legs. Right, and I think Vance had a very big role in that because, because he's still Senator from Ohio, according to him, he was trying to represent his constituents. And so there, there were reports that he was relaying, but he's a big driver to the, to the cats and dogs story. And so I would be surprised if they just kind of let that go in this uh, vice presidential debate. Fact checking also became very much a controversy in the past presidential debate. What impact do you think that could have on this debate? Well, I really think fact checking is, is kind of in a, what I would call a pendulum swing, where in the CNN debate on June 27th, there was very little fact checking. And we know from the interviews that were done after the debate with the ABC moderators, they felt like there was too little fact checking in the June 27th debate. Now, I think in the aftermath of the September 10th debate, there's kind of a similar backlash against ABC where they did five fact checks of Trump, but zero of Harris. And so I think we're gonna either see less fact checking in this round or a more balanced fact checking that maybe tries to uh, fact check walls as well as Vance. And picking up on what you said about fact checking, is this normally something historically that has come up in debates? Yeah, it's honestly a very sensitive issue and it's one which the campaigns typically will negotiate about. And there's still a lot of struggle about like what were the negotiations, for example, on the September 10th ABC debate. But again, just from a purely abstract debate standpoint as a director of debate, you really wouldn't normally in a debate have check fact checking live during a debate. That, that could happen with the judge after the debate. And then the other thing that is, is sort of self-evident is that the debaters can check each other during the debate. They can make arguments to each other, but the moderator role is somewhat intrusive and it probably originated with uh, Candy Crowley in the 2012 debate series uh, between Romney and Obama. So what does each candidate need to do to win this? Yeah, in order to win, I think that Vance probably needs to put to rest kind of that cat-dog controversy that kind of swirls around him 
and try to establish himself as a reliable purveyor of the arguments that he's making. He also probably wants to try to demonstrate some synchronicity with the head candidate. He sort of recently had said that he was out of step with Trump and kind of misspoke on some issues. And so showing kind of his allegiance to uh, the lead, I think is going to be important for him. I think for Walls, I think he wants to surpass kind of the expectation that he's created, that, that he's kind of not very good at debating. He told the Harris campaign that one of his limitations was that he wasn't very good at debate. Um, I, I personally watched him on his governor debate uh, last night and thought, thought he did pretty good, but I think he'll want to demonstrate that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Yale law graduate and, and, and master kind of the substantive uh, debate elements and be a, a strong asset to the Harris campaign. What issues do you expect to be at the fore? Well, I still think we're going to hear a lot about immigration and the economy. And so I think the plans that the two campaigns might have for reducing inflation might be important. I, I do think the immigration controversy continues to rate pretty high in uh, voter surveys of like top issues. And so, of course, that, that Springfield, Ohio controversy where th there are thousands of Haitian immigrants that were placed into that community of about 50,000 people. And so, advanced being from Ohio, I would expect they're going to you know, clash on that. And really, uh, Walls being from Minnesota and governor of Minnesota, there are a lot of similar Midwestern dynamics between the two states. And so, there is a good way for the two men to kind of talk to each other about like, well, Ohio does this or Minnesota does this and clash on how should uh, immigrants be treated as they're kind of released into different states and things like that. How important is it for these candidates to answer questions directly from the moderator? Because we saw some examples where that did not happen. Does that really have an impact on viewers? I think it does have some impact. I do think viewers are attuned to the fact that they're not answering the question. Now, having said that, it's a very common problem where politicians, not just in debates, but in regular journalistic interviews, they don't answer the question. And so there may be an agenda. I mean, almost certainly there is that they want to pursue apart from what the journalist is asking about. And so they will try to pursue that. But I do think that all candidate, candidates get dinged when they fail to answer the question. And it does become sport for the partisans on the other side where they say, hey, look, they didn't answer that question or they're afraid to answer that question. It shows. And is that something that the candidates themselves should be bringing up? In other words, if their opponent isn't doing that? Right. And again, for me as a debate person, that's what I would like to see. I'd like to see the debaters point out where they think that their opponent is failing to answer. And again, when I watch uh, Vance in his Senate debate and, and Walls in his governor's debate, I, I saw both of them doing that. And that's where I think they, they do have, a, a, to my mind, a more practical skill set to enact this in front of television cameras and call each other to task and say, hey, notice that the candidate didn't answer that question. I, I think I saw both of them do that, like in the last two years, both in the governor's race and in the Senate race. So I think that'll be interesting that they probably will do that in this vice presidential debate to come. And do you find that, at least with the last debate, there's a, there, there's a lot of blame on the moderators. And at the end of the day, do you believe it's the candidates themselves that have to own it? Well, that, that's always at root the issue, that the candidate will have to own, no matter what the situation is. Because you sometimes even have uh, cynics who say, well, you should not have agreed to the debate if you thought the moderators were that difficult. Now, I, I do think there's some probability that, that Vance is likely to get into rhetorical combat with the moderators based on the September 10th debate with ABC and, and just the habits that he's shown on television shows already with interviewing. So. That doesn't mean that they won't do it, but I think ultimately, yeah, the candidates are responsible for whatever their arguments are, and they're, and they're not really going to be let off the hook uh, because the, the moderator is difficult. And, and in fact, the truth is that if the moderator is difficult, if they answer the question well, then they're going to score higher. So ultimately, the rhetorical assignment is really going to rest with the candidate no matter how difficult uh, the moderators are. I was just going to ask, it, you know, how does that impact the candidate if they're jousting with a moderator? I guess it depends on their level of their supporters, right? I mean, right, and that's why I think it's interesting that Vance's sparring partner is Pete Buttigieg, who's actually sort of famous for going on Fox News into sort of a hostile media setting. I think that's a good model where if candidates are practicing with journalists that they think are antagonistic, 
I mean, for me as a debate coach, that, that would be the best practice for giving a good answer. And so you want to have, even if the moderators are, are in your view, being antagonistic, you, you want to rise to that occasion. And that's your best opportunity to score points because the audience is going to see both ends of that dynamic. And my last question is something that you said before, the fact that these are not very household name people. We're talking about Tim Walls, we're talking about J.D. Vance. Um, what impact does that have on turnout and viewership for these debates? Well, it's interesting in the history of presidential debates, the vice presidential debates tend to be watched about half as much as the presidential debates. So that would mean that they might get like 30 million viewers. It could be less, could be lower toward 20 million. But it's important to understand that even at those low numbers, that's bigger than almost any blockbuster TV show. It's bigger than anything the two men have ever encountered. Certainly their governor's races or Senate debates on television didn't attract nearly that many viewers. And so it's going to improve their national stock by a wide margin, more than almost anything else they could do in a TV campaign ad or even just going on a television show for an interview there's going to be a minimum of 20 to 30 million viewers. We know that in the September 10 debate, there were about 67 million viewers watching that debate. So I, I wouldn't personally be shocked if there were 50 million viewers to this just because the race is so tight and people are really trying to figure out, you know, which way this is going to go. And this debate is going to be an important insight for this event and in the election. So this is a huge opportunity for these relative unknowns from Ohio and Minnesota to become national names. Dr. Ben Voth, Director of Debate at SMU, thank you so much. We appreciate it. You're welcome, Jack. Really enjoyed it.